Let's take a look at properties of substances, see what we need to know. So it looks like we got five questions that we'll try to answer in this video. Um, the difference between a solvent and a solute. Um, the fusion and the thin permeable membrane, why that's important. Uh, common intensive properties. Uh, what are they, and can we come up with an example or two? Uh, specific heat capacity and the formula for density. Okay. So substance is physical matter that has uniform properties. A mixture is matter that is composed of more than one substance. When one substance is dissolved into another, the result is a solution. Uh, the substance into which another is dissolved is the solvent. The substance that is being dissolved is the solute. So this would maybe represent like one multiple choice question that you could see. Uh, the solvent and solute type thing uh, is more likely, and you see that as our, our first question on that first bullet point. What's the difference between a solvent and a solute? And again... The solvent is the substance into which another is dissolved. The substance that is being dissolved is the solute. Okay. All right, so first we'll take a look at uh, physical properties. Uh, and then we'll work our way into uh, chemical properties. But physical properties uh, have a little more to them. Um, physical properties can be easily observed. Uh, so an example of a physical prop property could be the color or shape of a substance. Physical properties that do not depend on the amount of a substance are intensive properties. Okay, so again, just make sure we heard that because intensive properties tend to show up. Uh, physical properties that do not depend on the amount of a substance, those are intensive. Okay, so a really common example of an intensive property is density, um, where the formula for density being mass divided by volume. Uh, melting point boiling point and specific heat capacity are all intensive properties with melting point being the temperature at which a substance changes from a solid to a liquid and boiling point being the temperature at which a substance changes from a liquid to a gas so i believe we were asked something about intensive properties sure okay give a example of a common intensive property Right, and so we just gave you three there, right? Which was a uh, density, melting point, and boiling point. Those are all intensive properties. <clears throat> and specific heat capacity is also an intensive property. Uh, specific heat capacity is the amount of energy required to change the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. Okay. Uh, extensive properties, on the other hand, depend on the amount of matter being measured. So we don't tend to not have examples, right? We just want to know that if the amount of matter being measured needs to be known, that's going to be an extensive property. Uh, with chemical properties, uh, they involve a change from one substance to another. That's really all you need to know. Uh, hydrogen is the most abundant chemical substance in the universe and we can jump right into water water makes up about 60 percent of the human body water is a major component of blood water carries nutrients and oxygen to cells and takes waste products away from cells water is needed to digest food properly as well as for temperature regulation all right, and so then we need to know how water is is polar, cohesive, and adhesive. A water molecule, which is two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, is polar. Since polar molecules are attracted to each other, water is cohesive. This means it holds together very well. Consequently, water does not require much energy to be pumped from one place to another. Water is also adhesive because the polar molecules of other substances in water 
are attracted to water molecules. All right, and that I believe relates to a question. Um, and so we just need to be comfortable with the fact that it's polar, cohesive, and adhesive. Just the knowledge that it has all three of those characteristics might be enough to give you a correct answer on a question. Um, but knowing the specifics that we just went over would be even more helpful. And then finally, diffusion and osmosis. Uh, diffusion involves movement of the solute from areas of higher to lower concentrations. It results in substances eventually becoming evenly distributed, and the process can occur across thin permeable membranes because individual molecules are small enough to pass through. So again, uh, there is a question uh, on that thin permeable membrane, and the reason that's important is because individual molecules are small enough to pass through. Very important. Uh, osmosis involves movement of the solvent from low to high concentration. Osmosis is a specific type of diffusion. It involves migration of the solvent rather than the solvent, and it is a process utilized by the kidneys to maintain proper water balance. Okay. So again, the <clears throat> I think we covered all of those. Uh, the formula for density we mentioned more like towards the beginning of the move of the uh, video here. Uh, specific heat capacity uh, we referenced, uh, but I don't think we went back and answered it. Specific heat capacity is the amount of energy required to change the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree. Uh, I would be prepared for having to know that. And we just talked about diffusion going across the thin permeable membrane uh, and the significance being that individual molecules are small enough to pass through that thin permeable membrane. And I think that everything else is covered. So you should be comfortable being able to answer these questions and that gives you a really, really good place to be when trying to uh, answer all the properties of substances questions on the exam.